Hi everyone, how are you doing? Thank you very much for joining me again. This week we are going to be talking about one of my favourite artists' latest releases, and that is Bonnie Vare's Heymar. So this track was released on the 3rd of June, exactly a week ago today, I'm filming this on the 10th. And yeah, let's have a listen to it. So instantly, this reminds me of one of the tracks on um, his self-titled Bonnie Iver album. It's kind of that vibe with the 22 million album. It went quite um, kind of out there with experimentation. It was very much more electronic. With the Bonnie Iver album, he um, he kind of mixed that electronic and acoustic vibe that he was always going for. He initially started out more acoustic with the odd kind of like synth and vocoder use in his tracks but with Bonnie Vare and 22 million he went really kind of electronic um so so far this is kind of reminding me of the um of that sort of track I really like the intro the kind of build up with the um it sounds like a guitar that he's using there and also some form of pad that he's got going on in the background so yeah let's carry on listening <laughs> nice so it's coming in there with that single uh, beat there on the uh, on the synth pad that he's using. If you watch his Live at Air Studios recording, it's him and his drummer, former drummer, I'm not sure if he's still in the band or touring with him, not sure what's happened there. It's those two guys that um, they're playing, it's Justin Vernon and the drummer playing um, uh, piano and they're playing through some of the tracks from the Bon Iver self-titled album. This synth box here that he's got, I'm not sure of the name of it, so do, I do apologise, but this is featured on that track it's got kind of like a it gives the the pulse for the for the beat so this is i'm guessing his kind of pulse for the track I waited outside. I took it remote. okay so with that female kind of vocal or male vocal that's been sped up there that's really more along the 22 million lines he used a lot of that in his uh, tracks particularly like it might be over soon so yeah that kind of effects in there his voice in this in comparison to the other track that I've listened to that he's released lately is is kind of you know there's more emotion in this track I've been watching a lot more of his solo performances I really like it when it's just him Justin Vernon on his own performing things like Holocene and also there's those performances that are kind of for one fan only let's carry on listening <laughs> So it's a great melody here. I really like that kind of where it's going into the, what I'm guessing is going to be the chorus section. It's just typical Bon Iver vocal. His voice isn't the best voice in the world, but the thing is with that, I always argue because I, I teach vocals myself, with that, I do believe that vocal sound is subjective anyway. You know, you, you not everyone's going to like the way your voice sounds. And it's also a case that, um, you know, sometimes passion can overtake pitch, um, as far as I'm concerned. So if someone's really giving a real passionate performance in the studio, then sometimes their voice is going to be pitchy, but the passion kind of takes over from that. And a good example of that would be Father and Son by Cat uh, Stevens or Yusuf Islam. There's a particular bit where his voice breaks and it goes completely out of pitch when he's doing the the son part of the of the vocal and but no one really kind of picks up on that no one says anything about that being out of pitch or pitchy or horrible it's just one of those things that people kind of accept it's part of the passion of the performance and in today's day and age where people are so uh specific on making sure that vocals are in pitch and bang on in tune uh, with everything else particularly particularly when there are um synth and pad tracks going on in the background that are pitch perfect then it's kind of you know it's great to see that someone's not really kind of hammering on the uh the the, the auto tune so let's carry on listening So he's really using the full extent of his vocal range on this bit with the uh, So vote, you know, you mop it up. So he's really kind of 
using that typical Bonnie Vare head voice down into chest voice, um, mixed voice really actually, I would say. His voice is quite low normally when he's singing through some of the older tracks, but with this, um, I mean, he does mix it up with every single thing. So let's carry on listening. So after reading through the lyrics, I'm watching this on YouTube. So there's it's, uh, an official lyric video. I'll stick the link to it up here. The lyrics at uh, the video of it is kind of like a home movie vibe. Looks like it's old home footage of his. I'm not sure if it's him or who it is. It's quite, it's not very clear. But yeah, with the lyrics here, when he's singing through the you're back and forth with life on that bit here, he's really going for the I don't know, it's it's kind of like, I'm not sure what's gone on in his personal life. Um, I don't really follow too much about him. He's quite a reclusive person when it comes to the media and topping people up with information about himself. But for me, it's, this is quite the sad kind of like a lost song. It's like someone's broken bad news to him. With the, you're back and forth with light, I feel like this is someone that, this is a loss. This is someone that's kind of almost passing away really it's quite sad and you know with the this the, the kind of synth pad in the background that's that's really sort of droning through the track it it gives you that very um somber kind of mood uh, throughout the track let's carry on listening okay so the track's building now he's um he's bringing in the the, the drum here bass is becoming a bit more active in this bit as well. I like that. That's really good. Okay, so that's that's really cool. I like the way that it kind of it's starting to build up a bit more. From the sounds of it, it's about to go into another chorus. Again, this is just the whole the whole YouTube uh, video vibe is all like home movie clips. Um, He's around a lake or a, a, a pond or something now. Um, there's a dog in the video, <laughs> just to describe it to you if you haven't seen it, but definitely go and check it out just so you can get um, an idea of it. Um, it's a great lyric video as, as far as I'm concerned. It reminds me of um, Ed Sheeran did one about his um, about his younger life and younger days. And so it's kind of along those sorts of lines if you're not interested in going to watch it. <laughs> Yeah, so it is really building again. There's more um, guitar parts. I think that's the sax part in the background. Let's just go back. No, that's a synth part. Sorry, I know that he does have a brass section in his band. So yeah, that's just another synth part in the background. Um, sounds like the old kind of Roland Juno sort of tracks um, and sounds. So yeah, that's going on in the background. That's building a bit more. Um, the female or sped up, uh, pitched up vocal is um, kind of more present in the track as well, which is great. Bit of distortion in the track there, it's great. Effective distortion. Okay, so it's gone into this kind of minimalist section now. Um, it reminds me of one of his earlier uh, tracks, Flume. They did that, in, um, he did that in uh, that particular track where it's kind of like experimental noise. A bit, it's very like a, very much like a jazz ethic to that, so. So that bit goes on for quite a while, actually. Okay, so again, so it's like someone's broken bad news to him. You know, he's saying, I waited outside, then you took me in the room um, and you offered up the truth. So it's like someone's kept something from him or um, he's kind of keeping, he's, He's not really had the full story about something. So yeah, he's coming out with that now. The track's gone from, the track's gone from this kind of real 
strange experimental thing like a crazy thing so that could be a representation of what he's thinking how his mind was feeling at the time if he if this is a if this is a track about um receiving some bad news my eyes crawling up the window to the wall so this again is something i reckon is bad news has been given to him um and he doesn't really know where to look in the room So he stayed quite in his head voice there through that whole bit, um, which is nice. So he's doubled the vocal here as well. So it's made it a bit more present. It's louder. Um, there's harmonies which are uh, more present in the track as well now, which is great. The sound is, is I really like this track so far. Okay, and that's where it ends. Kind of a, an abrupt ending there as well. So it finishes off on a chorus, just a simple one round on the chorus. Lots of people like to double up the chorus. So, um, I mean, I probably, personally, if I was writing something like this, not saying he's done a bad job with this or anything, I'm not criticizing this at all, but I probably would have gone for a double chorus, but that's just me. Um, but then again, him finishing it with just that one chorus with more, with a more simplistic chorus, it kind of leaves people wanting more. So, in some respects, it's better in that way because you're not then sitting there, you know, going over the same thing again and again. It's quite um, a medium length track. It's about three minutes, 36, it says here, according to the YouTube video. So, um, but there's some credits on the end here as well. And kind of a, yeah, there's a trail out here at the end as well. So yeah, three minutes, 36. Yeah, quite a sad song in some respects. It seems like all the tracks that I'm looking at lately have been quite somber or quite sad tracks, but it's not an intentional thing, it's just these are tracks that I want to talk about that I, that I like. So yeah, I really like this track. It's it's kind of experimental. It's, it's a, almost a mixture of um, his whole career, really, from the earlier days on um, Forever Forever Ago, um, right the way up to 22 Million. It's got that kind of synthy sound, the pad sounds in it that he used us in that the high-pitched vocal that we spoke about, the experimental thing from the earlier albums, and also the very sort of straight um straight drum parts that he used a lot in the self-titled album so yeah i think this is a great track i really enjoyed it go and check it out let me know what you think about it in the comment section below I'd love to hear your thoughts on this track have you heard it before is this the first time you're kind of being introduced to the song let me know what you think in the comment section below thank you very much for joining me and i will see you all very soon Bye bye